Hi, Nate. Good, good morning. Thank you for joining. Um, I think we've got about 14 in, in at the moment. Um, we're just going to wait for the rest to join us. Um, if you guys want to use the chat function uh, to introduce yourselves to others on the call, that would be great. And also, uh, if you could mute yourselves for the next 30 minutes, that would also be really useful. But it'd be great to have a little introduction from everyone on the chat function, just so we know who's on the call and you maybe have some connections with each other to make as well. Some new faces here today. Lovely to meet you all. Thanks for joining, Alban. We'll just give it a couple of minutes. Um, can someone just confirm in the chat if they can hear me? Perfect. Brilliant. Thank you, Abin. Hi, Preeti. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Dave. Perfect. Thank you. We'll just give it a minute or so, and then we'll get started. Brilliant. Good to see you, Stu. Thanks for joining, buddy. Perfect. Right, look, let's get started this morning. Thank you for joining. So this is our first webinar of 2024, and it's the Essential Lead Generation Checklist. We go to many events, speak to many people, and they're all running some sort of lead generation activity. But often what I find is they don't really know what the or elements of a successful lead generation campaign are. So hopefully by the end of today, in half an hour's time, by about 11 o'clock, you guys will be leaving this call with some great value and some education on how to successfully conduct a lead generation campaign. Can I just ask a question using chat function, simple yes or no, if you're currently using any form of lead generation strategies within your business? Yes, brilliant. Not much, no. Okay, so we've got a variation of answers. Brilliant. So those that are running something, hopefully by the end of this session, you can improve what you're running. And those that aren't, we can definitely get you started to generate some leads of your own, okay? So look, firstly, the first question I always start with is, I like to ask our visitors and our clients, you know, what is lead generation? So lead generation has many different definitions. And typically these definitions vary from job role, okay? So what you find is a managing director will have a good understanding of what lead generation is, but it will very rarely be aligned with what a sales director thinks, what a marketing director thinks, and then further from that, what the actual employees of the business think. If you're self-employed, it's a great time to have a definition of lead generation. If your senior leadership team and those that are selling for you and doing your marketing are not aligned on what leads are, they will be producing leads that board level members are not going to be satisfied with. So when I speak to people about lead generation, they call it appointment booking. They may say, marketing will often say it's about engaging someone's interest. Sales will say, we want money spent with us straight away. To me, that's a poor salesperson, okay? Marketing normally have the best definition of what lead generation is, and often sales will have the worst definition. A managing director would sit somewhere between sales and marketing, and that's where we need to be. OK, we need to be aligned on what is lead generation. Now, what is lead generation? A simple way of actually looking at what lead generation is, is the following definition. OK, now more than ever, our buyer has the world at their fingertips. OK, they can find out who provides what solution with little to no effort. 
So the best way to capitalize on this is to be in front of them before they need you. OK, so what I call this is a two tier combination of top of funnel marketing combined with laser precision targeted outreach. OK, I speak to too many people. They're doing a lot of the top of funnel marketing, but they're not doing any of the laser precision targeted stuff. OK, that laser precision targeted stuff's the bit that's going to change your business, going to help you find your key accounts. It's going to help increase your revenue significantly. By doing this, you're going to get those that are buying now. Now, everyone in this meeting will be able to pick those up that are buying now. It's simply luck. If you can string a sentence together and have a conversation, you're going to easily access those that need your services now. OK, number two, you're going to build relationships with those who are aware of your services or your products, but they're not ready. We call this pipeline building. OK, and step three, you're going to educate and build awareness with those who aren't yet aware they need you. Now, this is the hardest part of lead generation, but the most important. This is future proofing your pipeline. You're taking the time to provide education and value to your prospects to leverage you above your competitors who are still stuck with their sales pitches, okay? They are slapping people across the face with their products and services who aren't yet ready to buy. And when they say they're not ready, they completely drop them. I've come across a lot of sales functions where they're hunters. They want it today. They want it now. But really, the best salespeople, we need to be farming, okay? Hunting is important, but we need to be farming. Too many businesses, they pop up, they make some quick sales, and then for the next six months, they've got no pipeline. That's when times get tough. So if you can do all three of these things success, successfully, you're going to have in six months with a bit of fierce focus, a living, breathing pipeline. So what's the first thing when it comes to lead generation checklist is making sure as a business, you are aligned on your definition of lead generation. If you are not, this is the first thing you need to do, whether you're self-employed or whether you have a team of 100. Our clients vary from small plumbing and heating organizations to our biggest client is Eon. OK, now, when I did a similar session with Eon, there's about 16 people around the board. OK, they all had a different definition of lead generation. Guess why they weren't generating leads? Because no one actually knew what a lead meant to those businesses. OK, so moving on from this is what outbound channels should I be using? So using the chat function, if people just like to quickly list what channels are they using when it comes to lead generation? Those people that are actually generating leads already. By channels, I mean the different variations where it's social media, email, telemarketing, LinkedIn, Google ads, Facebook ads. What is it that we're using? LinkedIn email. Perfect. Anybody else? Social LinkedIn newsletter, email and BDM. Check a trade, social media, LinkedIn. Don't forget the expos as well, Stu. They're another channel. Mail campaign, social media ads, networking events. Struggling with email, LinkedIn too. OK, cool. Brilliant. So look, there are so many channels that we can be using when your lead machine are involved. We are, our expertise lies within telemarketing, email marketing and LinkedIn lead generation. OK, there are other channels which are great, like Google, ad, Google ads, LinkedIn ads, Facebook ads. You know, you can use other sort of directory platforms as well. But what we're going to talk about today is the free channels that we know. And why these channels are so important, okay, because these three are the cheapest channels to be using for yourself, okay? So very rarely will you need to invest a budget or a significant budget behind the three channels we're going to discuss. Or if you're working for a business, you're not going to have to pester the CFO for some budget, okay? So you can crack on and do what you need to do. So the first channel is email marketing. Somebody mentioned that they're struggling with email marketing. A big reason why people struggle with email marketing is they think they're going to generate leads directly from email. OK, so there are businesses out there that will send out 10,000 blast emails per month, per week, per month, per day on your behalf to your audience. OK, and what happens with these emails? They go to our junk. They go to our spam. Because whoever's written them doesn't actually know what they're writing. They're sent out by a bot and nobody ever replies to your email. If somebody is pitching you a 5,000 email campaign with maybe three sequences of 15,000 emails go out and you're getting five leads back, that's causing more damage to your brand than the five leads are worth. OK, so when we use email marketing, we should be using it to educate our audience and familiarize ourselves to our audience. OK, if they then want to come back and have a conversation with us, brilliant. 
For email marketing, a few of you here have signed up through emails for this webinar. It has to be used as a chain, okay? So we have to invite them to an event. We have to invite them to view some free resources. We have to provide them value for email rather than expecting them to just come back to us and go, yes, I want to buy right now. That's lazy, okay? Lazy sales. And a lot of businesses are still doing this. So when we're utilizing email marketing, it's education and familiarity. You can utilize other tools on your website where you can see where certain people are clicking. And there are tools out there that actually show you who's going to your website. So if you are using email marketing as a tool to funnel traffic to your website, then you're actually seeing who's landed on your website. You can potentially give them a call once they've actually looked at the value you are providing them. So email marketing, we want to educate and familiarize our audience, okay? LinkedIn direct messaging. LinkedIn's a really interesting one. And I get quite frustrated when I come across people on LinkedIn, especially the ones that are moaning about being sent direct messages, okay? I want everyone to imagine here they're a sales director and they've got 25 salespeople working for them. Now, if your team aren't utilizing LinkedIn in a correct manner, not using bots, not pitch slapping, but not trying to message your decision makers through LinkedIn, every single one of the people on this call will be calling their salesperson into a meeting to ask why they aren't doing it. So just because we're self-employed, just because we own a business, we shouldn't actually get annoyed that people are messaging us, okay? Because there will be a message that comes through one day that will be of value to us, okay? If the message is written correctly. So firstly, the message should be 75 to 100 words tops. It should be relevant to the person that we're targeting. We need to prove to them it's beneficial to them. And it needs to have a clear call to action. The biggest mistake you can make direct messaging on LinkedIn is having a weak call to action or just wanted to touch base or had one the other day and they were trying to refer the message to Brooklyn Nine-Nine and it's just all so cheesy. Look, we're contacting busy people if we can provide them a solution to a pain they're facing with a clear call to action, they're going to jump on a call with us. I hate it when salespeople beat around the bush and they're not honest about what they want. Be honest and your decision makers will engage with you. So we need to utilize LinkedIn, but in the right way. 75 to 100 words, relevant, beneficial, and with a clear call to action to generate those leads. And the third channel, telemarketing. I don't think I actually saw telemarketing. I saw BDM in the comments. I don't think I saw telemarketing. Uh, there was one, Stu referred to BDM, which I'm assuming is a bit of telemarketing. But apart from that, nobody else in the chat came back with telemarketing. And I know why that is, but a lot of people think it's a washed resource. I can tell you now it's not. And the less people that are using it, the more beneficial it's becoming, okay? These gatekeepers are receiving less calls. They're receiving less outreach. The most effective way to get in front of our decision maker, 120 decision makers a day, 50 decision makers a day, 75 decision makers a day, are either going to an event or picking up the phone, okay? We can utilize telemarketing in the right way to gather intelligence. When people think telemarketing, they think overseas call center. They think BT. They think 118.com. We have to differentiate ourselves. How do we do that? We be honest with them. Look, Mr. Customer, this is a cold call. Do you have 30 seconds for me to tell you why I'm calling today? If they say no, they were never going to listen to you. If they say yes, they're giving you permission to talk for 30 seconds. We need to utilize those 30 seconds to gather intelligence. The key here, it's telemarketing, not telesales. We don't want anyone's bank details. We don't want to ping them an invoice. Telesales, telemarketing, two different things. We need to gather intelligence. We need to try and book meetings and generate leads where possible. But the third and the most important reason to use telemarketing is to build that relationship with our audience, okay? So for example, if somebody's not interested today, that point three, we're educating them so they're aware, so they come back to us when they need us, okay? There's an ethical way of doing telemarketing, but we have to be sure on how to do it. So everyone in this chat so far that's not mentioned they do telemarketing, it's the cheapest form of lead generation because you can do it from mobile do it from a VoIP line do it from your desk and I promise you now if you actually did it properly for a week you generate yourself some opportunities okay so telemarketing LinkedIn and email three key channels to be utilizing next what is your current messaging and does it work so often the channels are irrelevant 
90% of businesses have weak messaging, okay? 90% of businesses slap features and benefits in people's face. What business wants to know what you do without what pain you're solving for them? We have to be targeting emotions, okay? And in our B2B world, there are three types of businesses when it comes to emotion, okay? We have fear-solving businesses, we have pain-solving businesses, and we have thrill-solving businesses. Now, thrill could be something like corporate hospitality. It's quite easy to play on that emotion to get somebody engaged to go to something that they want to go to, okay? So, for example, <laughs> watch, if you watch the F1, okay, you might, want, you might want to go to Monaco like it was this weekend. You can't get tickets. As long as the budget is correct and the advertisement's put in front of you at the right time, you're going to purchase, okay? And fear, on the other hand, is something like life insurance, fire and security, okay? Now, their biggest challenge isn't actually getting people interested. It's having ethical marketing campaigns. So actually ethically generating leads rather than fear-mongering people into buying. Now, 95% of our businesses solve a pain. And this is the, probably the hardest emotion to market to because a pain isn't actually a problem today. It's just a niggle. It's just the pain. So how do we make that pain an interest? Well, we need to ask right questions. OK, so if 95 percent of people on this call, your business will solve some form of pain. If it doesn't. And I recently spoke at Reading and I said this, if your business isn't solving a fear, pain or a thrill, you don't really have a business that's going to sell, essentially. OK, because what you need to do is look under the bonnet and work out why your clients already buy from you. And a good way of doing this is actually working out the three key reasons why your clients engage with you. If you can work out the three key reasons why your clients engage with you, you can dictate your messaging around this. So, for example, you might have a messaging sentence, something similar to this. Typically, those that we work with, they face the three following challenges. They either have X, Y or Z. Do any of these challenges relate with you? We've not told them how we're going to solve the challenge. because At this point, it's completely irrelevant. I don't care if you do social media, telemarketing, if you're going to stand on the high street with a sign strapped to your head or whatever you do. You need to understand my challenge first. Once you understand the challenge, we can then present the solution. But if you can get pain based marketing and messaging correct, you can write messaging and do marketing and generate leads for any B2B business. The problem is people don't know how to do this properly. So what they do, they lead with the product, they get no response and they say the channels don't work. But what it actually is, is your messaging is weak, okay? So off the top of your heads, you're using the chat function. If everyone can just put the three key reasons why they think their clients buy from them. Anyone? Thank you, David. Sincerity, transparency, and you're solving a problem of heating, cooling, high energy costs, employee benefits, and they just wait times reduce employee absence, over dependency on key individuals. Perfect. So, for example, we've got somebody in the chat that's to solve a problem when it comes to heating, cooling, high energy costs. So. That's great, but let's go one step deeper because to the gen general public in a busy day, they might not have a problem with their heating or cooling or high energy costs. So what's the emotion behind that? Why do we need to lower our energy costs, cost of living? OK, so, for example, that's a that's a good three, but it can be stronger. It's what emotion is the individual going to feel? Because whether we're prospecting to the head of Microsoft or we're prospecting to a chap that owns a local pub. We're all human, so we will all feel the same type of emotion. So rather than just leading with your, your top-level problems that you solve, what's the deep emotion behind what you solve, okay? So really try and channel that into your messaging, okay? We need our prospect to acknowledge their pain before we provide a solution and leave the features and benefits alone. Book a meeting with your prospects on the back of their needs, not on your solutions. Nobody wants to know what you do until they know why they need your services. OK, so that's number three, sorting your messaging out. Next, 
we move on to how can I access my marketplace? So a lot of people say to me, Kosh, I know who I want to work with, but I don't know where to find them. OK, simple strategy to this, and it baffles me who don't know this. You can buy data. OK, so if you know who you want to target, that's an excuse, in my opinion, because you can make five phone calls, get five quotes. You can go and buy data. When people say they struggle to access their marketplace, it's because they don't know who their market is. OK, or they have some idea, but they've not spent the time to actually do a deep dive into who their market is. So first of all, demographic. And I would say all 24 people on this call can easily come up with a demographic for their clients. And that could be turnover, location, job title, industry, headcount, revenue, whatever that may be. Very simple. OK, now that's what a top level junior marketing assistant would do. Junior sales would do. Anyone who doesn't really understand marketing on a deep level might just go and do that. That will still bring back significant amounts of data for you to target. So where do you go now? Because you try to do it. You've got too much data. So you just put it on hold again before that you need it again because you're busy now for two weeks. So you don't need to look at it. What you need to do is understand the psychographics of your prospects, of your marketplace. What are their behaviors and what are their attitudes? OK, so. For example, you may have a certain demographic of individuals you work with, and you may have sorted that out. Then it's looking at the psychographics of the type of people you're currently working with, and can you scale that? So, for example, if you're a mortgage advisor or you're in life insurance, it's quite a personal service. It'd be very easy for you to understand why the people that work with you work with you. OK, are they between 50 to 65 or are you a younger mortgage advisor, life insurance advisor? So you're actually attracting the market between 20 to 35. OK, on the flip side, if you're an engineering or manufacturing business, you need to understand your buyers, psychographics, their behaviors and attitudes. Are they the type of buyer that wants to be wine and dined on the big scale like some of these buyers do? Or are they a family man? quite low key and they just want to have a good solution at a good price that solves their problems and a long term relationship. So to access your marketplace, understand your demographic and your psychographic. Once we've got those two things, you can access your marketplace quite easily. You can literally access it by joining a trade association. You can walk into events, walk into expos where your marketplace hangs out, or you can now start to buy the relevant data to set your team up or yourself on a lead generation campaign to start talking to these people. The key thing to remember is people buy people. And that's why psychographics are so important. There are so many solutions out there now. So we need to ensure that we are engaging with those people who typically we would get on with. There's no point wasting our time. Okay. Now, once we do this, you'll be able to access the marketplace that you need to. All right. So moving on from this, how to access the marketplace. How do I create a successful plan and strategy? Once again, we can sit around planning all day. I've given marketing people a shout out at the top of this webinar. I'm now going to bring them back down to ground again. Too many marketing people spend too much time strategizing and planning. I have clients that have marketing people within their business. And I don't really know what they do, to be honest with you, because they're just planning and strategizing. Until you actually go to the market and actually see what your prospects are saying, how can you actually keep planning and strategizing? Yes, a plan is important. Yes, strategy is important. But what's important is doing it. I speak to too many people. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what to do. Don't know what to do. Look, buy a database, pick the phone up, start talking to people. Within two days of calling people, they will tell you what they want to hear. And now you just scale that to more data, to more prospects, to more conversations, to more events in your marketing materials, on your website. So successful planning is important. Actually doing something is a lot more important than planning. But once we actually start a campaign, it's then utilizing our smart targets to ensure that the campaign is running successfully. So we've got to make sure our campaign goal is specific, whether that be a number of leads, a number of conversations, a number of responses, a number of meetings, or you may actually have a revenue figure at the bottom of it. I wouldn't have a revenue figure because that's a sales job because you could still pass the best lead over to a sales team. And if they can't convert it, that's their fault. 
as long as you qualify using the BANT structure, budget, authority, need, and timescale. Okay. Now the M stands for measurable. We have to have a campaign that we can measure. So if you are running one of these bulk email campaigns, these companies will report on a click rate, an open rate, and then a um, form fill rate or an engagement rate. I've spoke to a few companies recently, actually, where they've engaged one of these companies, and now you can get bots to click emails. So, you know, a lot of these stats, they're not really measurable. They're not really specific. So it's ensuring your BDs, your marketing, your sales, or yourself, you sit out with a few set of KPIs, key performance indicators to acknowledge and measure the success of your campaign. Because if we don't have statistical targets in place, we're just going to be making emotion, emo emotional decisions and we need to make correct decisions. And that's when numbers are king. The A is achievable and aspirational. Can you actually achieve the goal or are you setting the targets too high? Typical sales director have terrible traits of setting really high targets, which motivates half the team and the other half just within two days. They know they're not going to achieve the target. They don't even try to achieve it. So ensuring our targets are achievable and they're aspirational. OK, they are realistic and relevant. Are, is our plan realistic? Is it relevant? Are our targets realistic? OK, are they relevant? Is it what the business needs today or is it what the business needs in six months? And finally, timely. What's the time scale behind this plan? What's the time scale behind these targets? How quickly do I need to achieve this? If you're in a stable position or lucky enough to be in a stable position, you want to be setting a 12 month goal. If you need business today, you might want to set a four week goal. And that will vary on the time and where your business is today. OK, you need to attempt variations of messaging and different outbound approaches before you write off any specific campaign. I see it too, too much. Two weeks in, we're changing. One month in, we're changing. Six weeks in, this doesn't work. Eight weeks in, this doesn't work. But then they've got 100 competitors in the market that it's working for. So you want to look beneath the bonnet again and go, is it us or is it the strategy? Or are we not running it properly? So five key pillars to running a successful outbound campaign. Really simple for you guys to set up. First one, create your target demographic. OK, so who are we targeting? And more importantly, why are we targeting them? Once we've got that, we need to understand our solutions, benefits and reasons to buy. So why would someone choose to use our company and what needs are we solving for our prospect? OK, so what solutions are we providing? What benefits are we providing to our clients? Why do our clients buy from us? And then we've got to put this into messaging. So using this information will create the messaging that our campaign will be structured around, whether that's LinkedIn, email, or even telemarketing. We need to provide some good questions to get the answers we need. And then it's about putting together our outbound strategy. So what I've not spoke about yet is combining our channels to create a successful strategy. If you run one of these channels independently, you might get some results and you may get lucky. The best way to target DMs is by having a multi-channel strategy that encompasses telemarketing, email, and LinkedIn to generate meetings, appointments, replies, responses from your target market. So creating that strategy. And finally, conducting the strategy. I can't tell you how important step five is. At Nike, the famous words, just do it. You, So many people go through the first four steps. Come to step five, they don't do it. And that's the fear of generating leads. There's such a fear of rejection that people don't actually anticipate the fear, the joy of acceptance. If you don't try anything new today, you're going to be in the same position tomorrow. If you try something new today, OK, you could have two, three, four meetings. And worst case, you're going to have nothing. And you would have had that anyway. So whatever campaign you're looking to run, actually run it. And don't just potter around at expos or events and say you're doing a bit of marketing here and there, because how effective is that? OK, whereas if you actually conduct a proper strategy, you can then be in control of your own lead generation. Now, referrals and network are really important. We do networking. We have a great referral strategy as well with a lot of people we know. But you can't have any control of when those referrals or when your network's going to pay off. And I tell you now, when you have a tough month or a tough quarter, that's when your referrals will naturally try up. OK, but when you're having the best time of your life, the referrals will keep coming in. It's just the way it works. So making sure we have an outbound strategy is really important. It gives us control over our own sales pipeline. OK. And then what tools are available to help me succeed? Now, 
there's multiple different tools to help you succeed when it comes to lead generation. The first one is CRM. Okay. Too many businesses either have a CRM, don't use it properly, or they use Excel. So just really quickly chat function, who here uses CRM? And if so, what CRM are you using? Spot Mailchimp, Tracker Hub, HubSpot, HubSpot. Soho, cool, HubSpot, in house maximizer, Salesforce. Brilliant. We've got some great CRMs there HubSpot, Salesforce, Maximizer. A lot of people, Zoho is really good as well. Uh, a lot of people say to me, Coach, you know, HubSpot, Salesforce, are they worth? I don't, I don't get any commission by the way. I don't resell CRM. I just know a lot about them. It's, Yes, they are worth what you pay for them, because if you use them effectively, they will provide you the revenue return you need. Now, that all depends on the size of your business as to what you, which user model you have. But you need to make sure your CRM is in place and your CRM process is followed. OK, in my early career, I worked for a business where basically if you did not use the CRM properly, you got free strikes and you're out because they realized they had about 6000 staff. And then, however you want to wrap that up, we were just a number to them. So when we leave or when we go on holiday, somebody had to pick our tasks. And the, the tip we were told is use the CRM as if you're never going to be seen again within the next hour for the rest of your life. Because what will happen for the next few weeks? Yes, people be like, oh, you know, where's Koshi? He's not here anymore. But the business needs to continue. So if you're working for someone else, your own business, having a CRM, having database management in place, having a correct CRM process will ensure that in six months time, you're not chasing leads. They're there waiting for you. OK, so get a CRM in place. And if you have one, start using it properly, because I bet 90 percent are not using it correctly or to the maximum capacity it could be used in. OK, and if you need any tips around CRM, like I said, I don't resell any, but please drop me a line afterwards. Happy to give you some tips depending on what your needs are. OK, LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So Sales Navigator is great as well. OK, a lot of people use the 30 day trial and they don't continue using it. If we can know how to use Sales Navigator properly, if our messaging is right, we can really find those that we want to target and our decision makers through Sales Nav. So it's really popular. People, a lot of people know about it, but a lot of people don't use it. So making sure we utilize it is really important. I think it's about $70 a month or whatever it is. For a lot of people, that will be less than one sale on this call. So you get one sale a month from it, it pays itself, okay? Then we've got data tools like Hunter.io, Casper, okay? And Cognizant, Outreach. These are all data finder tools, search finding tools. You can find personal mobiles. You can find personal email addresses. So I'll just go through that against Hunter.io and Casper, okay? We then also have Cognizm and Outreach. These are four different similar search finders that have different ways of integrating. So Casper will integrate with your LinkedIn. If you go on a LinkedIn profile, it has a plug into Google Chrome, you click on it, and it basically scrapes the, the LinkedIn profile for either a mobile number or a personal email address. Because a lot of people say to me, they waste a lot of time when it comes to gatekeepers. This can bypass it, okay? And then to write messaging, if you feel comfortable, chat GPT is there, use it. Don't be scared of it, okay? You don't need to write all of your messaging on chat GPT, but if you're struggling for ideas, even when it comes to your social media posts, okay? Chat can give you a few ideas. Now we wanna change it to personalize it, but a lot of people don't use it completely because they think it's a massive red flag. If you do not use chat in, in a certain amount of time, you're gonna fall behind in whatever you do, or you're going to be not as efficient as you need to be. So utilizing ChatGPT to come up with messaging ideas, to come up with blog ideas, to come up with free resource ideas, it can be very useful. But what's important when we use it, we check ChatGPT and we actually make sure that we're putting our twist on it. We personalize it. We're not just copy and pasting. OK, that's really important. Perry asked the question here, how would you use Sales Navigator effectively? The first way to use Sales Navigator really effectively is to find your decision makers. So there's a lead filters and account filters button in the top right, I'm pretty sure, when you log in. OK, so depending on what different campaigns you're running, you want to save searches. So, for example, if you're targeting between 11 and 50 when it comes to employee count, you might be looking for Hampshire, Dorset, Surrey, and you might be targeting engineering businesses. And then in job title, you're going to put managing directors. Save search. It will then pull up 400, 500, however many in the area of those decision makers that you can now begin to 
go out to and engage with them in conversation. Some people go directly through Sales Navigator. My preference is to use Sales Navigator as a data finding tool, connecting with them organically on LinkedIn. And when they accept the connection on LinkedIn, messaging them organically. Because as soon as you see an in-mail come through in your inbox, I'm sure others are like this as well. You just know it's what it's going to be. It's going to be a pitch slap from Sales Navigator. So use Sales Navigator to find data, to find your DMs, connect with them, and then send them an organic message through their profile. That's how I would use Sales Navigator effectively. So some tools there, CRM in place, Sales Navigator, Hunter IO, Casper, Cognizant, Outreach, and using Chat GPT to save your time where possible. So it's 11.06. I think we said we promised you guys we'll wrap up at about 10 past 11. What's left then is questions. So any questions, anything that we've been through, please use the chat function. I'm more than happy to spend some time answering these for you guys. I'll wait for the questions to come through. And hopefully there's been some value within that whirlwind half an hour for all of you as well. No worries, Alban. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. Any other questions at all? My contact details are there as well. So if you have any questions afterwards, you know, if you don't want to reach out using chat function, please, you know, get in touch privately. Thanks, Stu. Look forward to seeing you soon, buddy. Thank you for joining. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Dave. Great question, Daniela. So when telemarketing, do you know a good way of getting around the gatekeeper on reception? Look, it's the golden ticket, right? If we all have the answer for this, then, you know, we'd all be successful. Look, what I would say, Daniela, is be honest, okay? Please don't use the line, I spoke to this person two days ago, or they know me, or I'm calling, because that's just complete dishonesty. And 90% of the time, if you get through using that method, you're going to get the response, I don't remember talking to you. So be honest, tell them why you're calling. And, you know, it's numbers game to that effect, Daniela. You know, enough calls, you'll get through to gatekeepers. But just like we're good salespeople, gatekeepers are also good. So there's trading out there. But my key tips, be honest and try utilizing Hunter IO or Casper where possible to get your decision makers direct dial. And then you'll come across less gatekeepers. Cheers, David. Thank you, Pretty. Thank you for joining. I hope that helps, Danielle, as well. Any other questions at all? I admit I'm not 100% who my ideal target companies are due to the huge variety of current clients I have. What would you do to focus this? So if you've got multiple different clients, what I would try and do is segregate using your products or services they're buying. So if you have product boxes already or service boxes, can you maybe categorize a demographic for each of those? Um, you know, that that would be useful. Um, so, you know, if, for example, they're buying product box A, James, you might have a certain type of customer client buying that. Now, what you may find is demographic, wise, James, you have a load of a variety of clients and you can't target them but I would be surprised if there's no trend in their behaviors and attitudes because once again, people buy people and they're buying either your services or your business's services. So if you can't categorize them through demographic, I'm pretty sure through attitudes and behaviors, you can maybe target your audience. Uh, Perry, yes, the recording will be released. So we're going to record it up, put on YouTube and we'll then put a link out there on our socials. Um, of course, yeah, if you'd like to know more at HubSpot, Phil, my email's here, coach at yourleadmachine.co. It's coming up as admin, so I don't really know who that one is. But if you drop me a line, I'm more than happy to spend some time on helping you understand HubSpot. And then if you're further interested, we have a few HubSpot partners that I can introduce you to, and they can maybe take the conversation further. Cool, we'll just give it a couple of minutes. If anyone else got any other questions, let me know. You meet a potential customer. 
in person? How can you better understand their needs so you can tailor your products and services to fit their business needs? No worries, James. Thank you. Uh, Vinay, good question. So look, there's two ways I take this is going, um, you know, if you meet somebody in person, it's about asking them questions. Okay. So you want to find out their needs. You want to find out their challenges in their business. So like I said earlier, the messaging, having that free prone attack of, you know, typically the types of clients we work with are X, Y, and Z. Do these sound like yourself? That could be a really good question. So if we can work out why our clients work with us, maybe they're facing a similar pain or a challenge. Or if we're meeting them in person and it's an actual meeting that they've set up, there'll be a reason they're there. So sometimes being honest and actually asking them the question of, look, you know, we've set this meeting up. You said you're interested. You know, can I ask, do you want to start by, you know, sort of setting the scene as to, you know, where the business is today? That could be a really good question to ask. In terms of tailoring your products and services to fit their business, there will come a time, Vinay, where I would actually opt against tailoring your products and services to fit every prospect because you won't have enough time once you get enough leads through the door. So tailoring your products and services to fit the business needs can be quite dangerous because then all of a sudden you have an unscalable sales process. What you might do is have product boxes A, B, C, and D in place and that fits the different needs. Otherwise, what you'll find is you'll have to have expert salespeople working all throughout your business, tailoring different products or services for those different clients. And then it becomes an operational nightmare as well. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Marty, Marty. So thank you so much for the webinar. No worries at all. Um, do you have any advice how to set up a successful campaign to target people in taxi industry, make them book with us instead of using worldwide companies such as Uber as initially it can be difficult to understand specific needs as there is no specific age group? Yes, I do have some advice. So we have, as I say, Marty, we have data partners we work with. I'm more than happy to introduce you to, to Vic at TDP Agency. They've been a partner of us for about five years. She'll be able to help you find those, those people that you need to speak to as well. Um, and then there's other options as well, like looking through directories. You know, we sometimes may have to think out the box as well. So you may do Facebook search if you're looking for independent taxi drivers in the local area. Um, so, you know, because they might not all be registered with companies. But if you want to drop me a line at coach at your lead machine .co .uk, I'm more than happy to sort of do an introduction to Vic and even spend sort of 15, 20 minutes with you on a call just to help you understand how I would maybe use Facebook um, search to help find people within the taxi industry if we're not looking to target taxi companies. No worries, Vinay, it's absolutely fine. Thank you, Daniela. For, thanks for joining. I hope that helps, Martina. Brilliant. Yeah, I look forward to getting your email. Cool. Anybody else? There's about 13 people that are still on the call. If, if you have a question, you know, please feel free to use the chat box, ask the question. If not, you know, obviously we're, we're done here, so you can crack on of your days. But I do appreciate your time. Uh, I know it's Thursday morning. It's quite busy. So 30, 40 minutes of your time is really valuable. So I do appreciate it. just remember guys the most important thing is actually do something after this okay so go and action some points go and action some tips and make a change to your lead generation strategies otherwise you could have spent this half an hour you know maybe getting yourself a coffee and chilling out and having some breakfast as well so yeah please action some points and look if you have success or challenges maybe in a week a month two months time please reach out to me then as well I'm more than happy to to give you any feedback but look i'm going to end this here see that nobody else got any other questions i appreciate your time hope you all have a great day and look forward to hearing from a few of you you know potentially after this webinar and i will be in touch for our next one as well which will be in about three months time look forward to seeing you soon thank you very much guys cheers